So today we're going to talk about how to fold a protein. And uh, this is a long-standing problem that has been around for at least 40 years. And it's quite related to the protein design problem that was part of another lecture. Uh, and what has ha changed a lot is also what you heard in other lectures is that contact predictions have changed the field completely. So sometimes it's called ab initio protein prediction. So the idea is that we do a structural prediction of protein without using any volume. Ab initio means, of course, from uh, physics, of course, means that you do it without any knowledge. It basically refers to quantum chemistry calculations, but that's not really what we do here. But we don't use whole general proteins, we're just trying to use um, no knowledge of physics or knowledge of statistics or knowledge from protein structures and models of proteins from that. Uh, as I said, many of the methods designed here are actually often relevant for protein design. So to, to design means to, to, to make a protein sequence that folds into a specific conformation. So basically, Instead of having a to determine what how a sequence folds, is to determine what sequence folds into this space. And uh, there's been quite a lot of progress in both areas lately. So it, this comes back to the old problem of protein folding, and this is back to Anfis's studies of that. Uh, Lysozyme and many other proteins actually fold spontaneously to a given conformation. And uh, from a computational point of view, we have to find this is a, a two problems. One is actually we need to describe the energy. We need to find describe what is, is that is unique to this conformation that makes it different from all other conformations that makes it more stable. So we understand the free energy of a structure protein. The other one is that we have to find the problem, this energy. We have to find this, this confirmation, we have to find the, the final confirmation. And uh, you can treat this as a optimization problems. You can define this as so you basically you ignore how to get to the, to the uh, final confirmation. You just want to search space and find it. And then it's size of smart computational algorithms. It's, I mean, as Leventhal showed, it's impossible to search all confirmations, so you need to do as a smart algorithm. Or you actually try to simulate it. So you actually try to describe what happens in nature, trying to use some kind of description of the protein and then simulate what happens. Uh, but um, as I said, we would like to describe the free energy physics of uh, the, of a uh, uh, protein to understand what what is the that that determines the. the, the, the native state. But however, physics can be described in many different levels. We can actually do it on right, can go down to kind of chemistry levels, can do even, even to further down, which is most likely not completely necessary in this case. We can do it on what's called more like a mechanics level that would describe basically every atom as a fixed um, fixed ball and with a certain radius and certain charge and certain uh, bind, bonds to other atoms. And that's what used is more like a mechanics and more like a simulation that you will see in some videos later. However, there also are other areas, for instance, you can ignore all the water is the simplifications, you can ignore some of the atoms, you can the early methods and ignore the hydrogens, you know, and so you can do it uh, at different levels. And it, it has been shown that actually there are different levels that are useful for different cases. And uh, I will first, in the next part, I will go through some of these descriptions. Mm-hmm.